Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, with a new headset and all. So, hopefully, things will be sounding alright. The last one had finally decided to die on me. But we shall be having a Monday novice fight, so, of course, those of weaker constitutions ought to be looking away now. In the meanwhile, we shall be watching SG Peterson fighting for the Pans Elite, fighting for the 106th Pans Brigade. Opposing him shall be Ajax1980, fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 20th Infantry Division. Barracks start, barracks being placed so right, I suppose, at the edge, but still might have been better here or here, depending on where he wants to go. Two engineers, that's a pretty conservative, let's just call it the start, in fact. We are seeing some Panzergrenades out here for SG Peterson instead. Two squads, Schwimmmagen out. Note, a Schwimmmagen for SG Peterson, not the Kitten Cat. Of course, I have to see what sort of doctrine he goes for. One squad already heading out, and we are seeing the Gewehr 43 upgrade for it, taking points. Note, he's already building a building. He's in fact building a logistic company, so obviously he's got something planned, but at the same time, this sort of thing here can, of course, initially rather hurt your combat effectiveness. Since, of course, you'll only have one combat squad on the f out on the field. In particular, going for the logistic company would rather deny you getting an infantry attack, which could sort of make up for it in the shorter and a longer run. Of course, you might go for increased squad sizes, which could help otherwise. But again, it's he has to be careful at the moment. He could easily end up defeating himself already initially with this sort of start. We are seeing Rifle out and already here in Jax is just sort of fumbling about. They're waiting on the hillside and slightly wondering what the bloody hell they're supposed to be doing. Nothing's really happening. Not good. Also note here, I mean, Ajax is considerably ignoring otherwise some pretty good resources. I mean, we're talking medium and high resources right next to his base, which could be easily secured, yet for some reason, no one's being sent there. Instead, he's going for the considerably more risky and further away resources of less worth. Again, I mean, usually as a strategy on Bow Lowlands, at least the one I sort of go for, is to secure everything on your side of the river first, because again, the river's basically a point where you have to move slower and more exposed. And then you sort of slowly move over there when you sort of got something on your own side. You should not be sort of initially going towards this as, again, it is a bit more risky. But apparently Ajax1980 does not care and instead marches out into the open. And slightly wet. And yes, hold up inside the barn, the old empty barn filled with nothing but emptiness. Right from attack, no, out in the open there against Panzergrenades. Nicely hold up. In slightly better positions, opening up, they probably ought to be focusing down the engines in particular, considering note here. I mean, they can't fire back. There are no windows in the sides of the barn again. Note windows. Note windows. In this case, the Panzer is ought to be focusing on the rifle because, again, they're pretty much the only thing that can actually hurt them at the moment. And the rifle also considerably more exposed out in the bloody open. There we go, suppressor fire actually pins. Squad down, two men already down. Sergeant and some other poor bastard. Three men down, just retreat, Ajax. Unit preservation, preserve your units, Ajax. Too late. And a rifle squad was wasted within the first four minutes. And we might even see the engineers go down. This is definitely not... Looking out to be a great start for the Americans. Rather rough play against the Panzer Brigade, although the Panzer Brigades were never known for being elite units. And they're in fact quite the opposite due to a severe lack of training. On the other hand, they did were have a nice fuels. amount of equipment. Rifle squad number two out, marching out with their Garands. And one M1 Carbine, which was the preferred unit weapon of sort of short term sort of self-defense for the Americans. In fact, they'd rather give the troops M1 carbines than pistols because, well, you could get a bit better with a carbine without as much training, plus you were less likely to shoot yourself in the foot, basically. Of course, pistols were still handed out, but again, the Americans rather preferred giving out carbines rather than pistols, since again, less likely to get themselves killed. One pants goes down, a bit too slow in getting inside the barn, and there we go. Oh, Panzer is already exposed, then already low on health, taking considerable losses, pulling up there. Rifleman here, and in fact, the Rifleman could actually make this much easier for them by just moving over there again. Now, no windows. 
Note sides of a building. Note if they can actually fire out of the side. Instead, I mean, we do see one squad of Panthers on the way, on the run, but at the same time, the rifle continue to stay within range of the Gewehr 43 Panzer Grenadiers. And in fact, they get punished for it severely by the Panzer Grenadier. Good night, by the men. At the same time, we are seeing two scout cars out. He is clearly securing resources. Both cars with logistic upgrades, although it looks like this one has not secured the territory yet. Come on, Hans. There we go. A bit more munitions and a bit more fuel for SG Peterson and the 106th Panzer Brigade. We are seeing another assault force being leveled against these Panzer Grenadiers with seven kills. I mean, they're having it pretty easy at the moment. Grenades upgraded now for SG Peterson. Two rifleman squads again. He's going to need more infantry and already note he's floating manpower. Just spend it. Again, the rule of thumb when it comes to floating and working against it, just spend it. Just train stuff. You'll basically get better at actually doing something rather than just, you know, waiting for the right time. Again, resources floating are resources doing nothing. In fact, it can hurt you because, again, if you're opponents being sold with resources, he will have a much larger force which will crush your force on the field overall meaning. While in theory you might have the same sort of resources while you're floating in the long run, of course as he crushes yours on the field, he will have a resource advantage. So again, do not float. I repeat, do not float resources. And really it should be considered one of the gravest sins of company of heroes. Do not float resources. So again, you just ought to be training. In this case, he could easily get himself up to four riflemen. He could. No, he can't because, again, he's lacking actually fuel and he needs to connect this. Nice harassment, but again, also making the mistake of not connecting this territory in time. And so far, SD Peterson is consider holding a considerably larger f part of the map, but he's also not got a lot of anything, really. He's got some panzer guns, but very little infantry. He's got some Schwimmangs. I just got the scout cars, but again, they're not adding to the combat fight. They're just for more resources. And overall, I mean, the amount of pressure that SG Peterson can exert on his opponent at the moment is very negligible. He's got barely anything he can really hurt with. Which really ought to be his main focus, in particular considering how poor Ajax is in currently preserving his own units. Now we are seeing a Panzer command up. Barely any fuel for Ajax. He needs that, and he hasn't he hasn't connected the fuel point right here. I mean, just get that one and get this munitions. So he also get the munitions, mate. And he's also already got armor doctrine, which is considerably weird, considering he's got absolutely nothing pointing towards it, no supply out at all. And are you building a machine and emplacement like that? I mean. Besides the obvious that again you should not be building in placements right away, I mean, it's considerably easy to flank. I mean, you can just walk up here and then knock it out. Good night. And that is a machine gun emplacement sorted out quickly. They should not sort of be your only thing. They should not be that close to the front line. And they should definitely have some sort of consideration if the opponent can flank it, which clearly is not the case here. Otherwise, Ajax would have placed it a bit better. They should definitely not be the only thing on their own. Finally connecting there, another rifle squad ready. And now our weapon supports in there getting a sniper. Mm. And we are seeing an infantry half track out for SG Peterson. Panzer tracks also equipped. What some more novice players like to do, just stuff a half track full of Panzer tracks and cause some havoc. Which could work here because again Ajax is not really prepared for vehicles at all. He's not even got sticky bombs. Not even got sticky bombs, and now he's getting snipers. And he's getting a mortar, which is really weird considering he's not really attacking anything. And there's no real duck in positions by SG Peterson that could require it. There we go. And even note how quickly machine gun emplacement becomes useless, in particular with the half tech, but even infantry again, had they just moved through here, would have sorted it out. And now, of course, the machine gun emplacement is pointless, it's useless, it's a waste of resources. Schwimm Magnum moves though straight into it, which is very daft play by SG Peterson. Engineers hiding up in the building. Schwimm Magnum survives. Rifleman moving in from several sides. Machine gun emplacement almost done. Rifleman moving up, and we are seeing a grenade. 
Very nice attempt to get into half and actually they can damage troops inside half but not here because they're all jump out. Now instead we are seeing increased quarters, we're seeing eight Panthers against four riflemen, and they're just tearing them apart in this case, so Ajax does retreat. One man down, another grenade goes off at the Panthers with a grenade of 43s. One man down, but actually from the Panthers X squad. The rifle now suppressed from the infantry half track, and one thing to note here, infantry half tracks can suppress units out in the open decently well. So you should be careful about, you know, just charging in front of an infantry half track, in particular this infantry supporting it. That is where the infantry half track is at its most lethal, working with infantry, in which case it can actually do considerable damage. And should not be underestimated. Which is clearly what Ajax's men are learning the hard way. Not sure what happened there and how much he lost, but all of a sudden Fraps just decided to stop recording. Anyways, Riven here trying to do something. Grenade off at the Panthers, killing one squad outright. Well, that's nasty. Being behind only the Panzer Shrek Grenadiers. But also, SCP doesn't shot one squad of Panzer Grenadiers. We are now seeing Assault Grenadiers on the way to replace those lost. While the Engineers are still held up there, Mortar. Trying to bombard the crowds. Will it work? Apparently it does so nicely. Killing all but one. SGP doesn't have to be careful. He needs to just get out of there. And the engineers might actually bite the dust. Or not. Fortunate for him. But again harassment here. Fuel again taken away. Assault kind of is ready. And the Panzer Grenadiers of Panzer Brigade were largely men, in fact, to be equipped with assault rifles. Not rifles or MGs, but largely assault rifles with the only MGs, in fact, being on the half track. So again, rather one of the reasons I think the Panzer Elite rather fits a Panzer Brigade. More than what some like to think is an SS unit. Now going for the Panzer Support Command. Defensive operations is up at the Amer German base. Troops getting reinforced, getting healed. Sniper hanging about. Sniper not really being near the action and is just basically up to bird watching. And sadly, I don't know any bird watching jokes. Sniping at a swim magnet, though. Not really effective. And this stage, of course, there's another problem for Ajax. He's just revealed he's got a sniper, which is also pretty daft. And now all of a sudden Ajax decides to fortify the barn, turn it into the barn fortress. Dun dun dun. With a mortar, with a medic in station, everything. Which is supposed grand if it's actually close to the front line or potential front line, but again it's right far here. And I mean if the opponent just stays elsewhere, I mean it's all going to be wasted resources. It's only if he actually attacks in force that it'll actually become worth something. And a swim magnet lost again. Poor unit preservation. Yeah. Always work on it. Again, always sort of change your sort sort of figure out. Can I actually win this fight? What can I gain from this? If I can gain nothing, and perhaps I should just get the hell out of there. Panzer support command upgrade, and we are seeing an attempt at a Panther battle group and incendiary grenades. Now all of a sudden, infantry half track charging into the riflemen, and a few assault rounds firing out the side. And there we go, grenade. And again, note, you should be careful about grenades and half tracks and all that. I mean, one grenade can cause a lot of damage in a half track or near it. So again, be noteful. And that was pretty much the entire assault squad lost. And usually, and here's another thing, I mean, only one squad can really fire out of a half track at the time. So I mean, if you've got two in it, usually what I do is I dismount one squad, have that sort of lead the assault, then I have the infantry half track with the other squad in it follow up or depending on the situation it might happen the other way around but usually get one out have the other stay in and then sort of conduct the attack now in this case that's clearly not what happened SGP doesn't just wasted a squad of Panzer Grenadiers then again they're not the fatherland's best men in some ways since again in the Panzer Brigade they would not have much training and again the Panzer Brigades were largely meant to fight on the Eastern Front Sniper now taking up a position here. That sniper is really not seeing any good usage, and the question becomes why did Ajax even bother with them? And again, engineers standing about here. All of this territory nicely could be harassed by Ajax, but Ajax doesn't seem to be bothering. Them out. <laughs> we now have incendiary, grenades at our incendiary grenades up. 
and just speeding up because largely nothing is happening from either side. They're both American being pretty passive. Territory. None of them's really got a lot of resources out. I think you might be seeing the rifleman inside this one. No, just a Ford back. So wait, they're rifleman. With again doing nothing. Units in it doing nothing. Again, largely a waste of uh, resources. Now charging in the half track. Rifleman in sight. Panzers get out this time. Does not want to get grenaded, strangely enough. And there we go. Trying to grenade. Panzer check on the medic station. Is any grenade on the mortar? Veterans up for some. Enemy now the rifleman hunting down. And there we go. The mortar is down. The medic station almost down as well. The rifleman are taking considerable losses. Grenade at the Panzer Grenadiere. One man down, rifleman are suppressing, in fact the Panzer but they themselves getting suppressed by the infantry half tax machine gun. Down to one rifleman across there, still the four back, so he might still be able to continue, but no, he's actually forced to retreat. What a wa vast surprise. Who would have thought? Now we are seeing the rest of Ajax's forces of the 2nd Infantry pushing in with the mortar in support. Still largely nothing happening. He's mining, but he's not taking the point. Come on, Ajax. And he's actually waiting, I think, to get some Panthers on the map. Going for the Ford bags. Infantry half tack needs to retreat. There we go. Panthers need to get up to it and get out of there. No, don't take the point. SGP doesn't don't take the point. Oh, dumb cop priorities. Always focus on what's important. Likes preserving your unit and killing the enemy. Now he just needs to get out of here before he loses another infantry squad. No doctrine still chosen. Panthers are up here for some apparent reason, which is actually beyond my reasoning. But the fight has been won here. The Ford Bags though, no more, so that is manpower wasted, largely. Again, there's a lot of units just doing nothing, and we're seeing it supplied up now, which is about time. Trier Center, that's good. But again, lots of units doing nothing, and again, there's some poor reading of the battlefield by both players, and again, a lack of aggression. They're not moving forward, so, so far, the most aggressive one is the Panzerlick player, which is alright, that's the way it's supposed to be, but so are the Americans, and they're not. They're just doing nothing. They're not taking territory, and they're not trying anything, and also note, again, there's another great flaw in Ajax. He's got no anti-tank assets, he's forgotten one of the golden cardinal rules. Always have anti-tank assets, in particular if you're not seeing a lot of else of infantry or something like that from your opponent. And he's not seeing it. He's seeing a little infantry, he's seeing one half track, but that's it. And again, when you're facing off against a Panther, you play again. Always assume he gets Panthers. Always. No exceptions. So always get anti-tank assets reasonably fast, but again, no motor pool from him. Nothing at all from Ajax. Instead, he's getting another forward bags. He's wasting manpower on it. Oh, dear. If Patton caught him in doing that, he'd probably slap him. Repeatedly. Machine gun emplacement down. Of course, the Panthers are here having an easy time with this. Of course, having already killed the snipers again. The sniper was also a waste of manpower. Now, we are seeing the motor pool, but there's nothing that can actually ensure that the Panthers just don't crush the engineers outright while they're working on it. And SG Peterson is apparently, of course, a Dane coming to get you, he's more or less saying. Panthers firing away, they should not be that close to the infantry though. What if they had sticky bombs? And where is the infantry support? Always ensure infantry support. We're now seeing the Panzer moving in. We're seeing an armored car on the way. A Panzer Spiewagen of the lighter kind. And he's throwing grenades. Why are you throwing grenades at tanks, Ajax? Why? Oh dear. We are seeing sticky bombs soon, but. 
And also, why do the Panthers keep remaining within range? It's an not really exemplary use of Panthers. And I'm sure some of my viewers must be weeping at this very moment. Rather distraught over the awful Panther usage right here. Of course, now they are getting sticky bombed. And I mean, a Panzer IV could have done all of this just better, in fact. Particularly more particularly against sticky bombs. And yes, getting cut down. Sticky bombs continue to get locked at the Panthers. Engineers could go down. Another attempt and a grenade at the half track. Armored car moving out. Still no attempt at taking points there again. Needs to work on his map control, needs to work on his unit control, and just not having units stand about idle. I think there might even be a button for it. Indeed, there is. So now, next time, there's a button for it. In for vehicles. Armored car moves in, adds a bit of fire. Rather than the veterans who are now a bit harder to deal with, in particular for the Panthers. More sticky bombs on the Panthers again. They're not moving, they're not leaving. Supply art gone. He's obviously going for a Panther since we're seeing field repairs, which means the left hand side of the doctrine, but again. Why didn't he just have something prepared in advance? Instead of trying to really outline on Panthers, I mean Pershings, I mean that's not really a good way. Rifle are getting murdered, slaughter veterans for one Panther, more moving up, Panther is getting suppressed, a Hetz is now arriving from some Harris Panzerjäger Abteilung to provide some Hetzes. Half tank going to go down any minute now, weapon support center almost gone, Rifle squad crushed. Under the threats of the mighty Panthers, their lives snuffed out alongside their internal organs. Which were more pushed out like a sort of toothpaste tube. Anyways, more sticky bombs, just sticky bomb to death. And again, no real attempt by SD Peterson to salvage out or get some infantry into support. I mean, nope, now. No infantry defenses. He could easily just rush in some assault gun it is, and this would be game over. Okay, a Panzer IV. I mean, there's not much left for Ajax either. Have you still forgotten about the units here or here? Well, it looks like some riflemen might actually be moving. My goodness. The Panthers rolling around like... Well... Overweight oh, ballerinas with a crippled leg. Spewing out death left and right. While the engines are bulging out fumes to indicate they're not well. But again, and no attempt at putting them back for repairs. Two squads of Panzers now all of a sudden combat ready, sort of. Something for SG Peterson, I suppose. Even the Hetzer now has a damaged engine. Yet S.G. Peterson and the 106th Panzer Brigade does not seem to care. Well, I'm sure the Brigade cares, but Peterson doesn't. And there we go, a Panther actually bites the dust. Veterans is free for the rifleman, and a Persian can now be called in. There we go. M26 Persian rolling in. Takes a direct hit on the Hetzer. Jagd Panzer 83 T. Based on a Czechoslovakian tank, was quite excellent. It was also quite up produced a bit. And this is actually considering considering it was actually produced in many thousands. 
when there was only about in the last year of the war which is actually quite impressive and the Hetzer goes down Pershing almost down grenade incendio grenade on the right from Metro Z3 Panzer is not having much luck there out in the open against Metro Z3 riflemen destroyed engine Panzer is down Pershing almost down but so is the Panther main gun destroyed oh no And Peterson, like the reckless swine he is, thinks it's funny. Well, he won't find it so funny when he's transferred to Leningrad. Um, <coughs> I mean, something. And Betram's 2 for the Pershing. Now just... Why have you stopped repairing it? Ajax, repair it, please. Don't build a barracks. And now we're seeing a bag of... Tiger rolling around. Of course, there were no real bag of Tigers in the war. And if I'm not. Yeah. Ravni getting slaughtered by the two scout cars with their MGs. They have two and if I'm left. guessing, these two guys are from Jutland. Which would be depressing. No, not really, but still. But get the Pershing repaired, please. Scout car sneaking about. Shrimp Magnet anyways, all three victory points. In fact, we've seen them draining down again. There's been absolutely no attempt to really take them again. I mean, that's even weirder from Ajax. He's mostly been concerned just moving about taking victory points. I mean, not. he's just been occupied with taking out the base, which is not really what you ought to be doing. And now he's losing his panzers and a panzer shrek to the veterans of free riflemen. I mean, again, poor infantry tactics. Do not send units in piecemeal like that. Never mind, again, get some more units and... S yeah, there's not much left. Poor unit preservation again from Peterson. Poor tactics, poor lot of things. And now he just handed his opponent a Panzerschreck. And he's getting more Schwimmagens to just take the victory point, which is alright, I suppose. Again, he should have done that before chugging into the base. I mean, you should not be base rushing a lot in this game. There's time for it, but there's also time when you shouldn't be doing for it. Doing it, in particular when you don't have a lot of units to support such an endeavor, which is rather what Peterson rather did instead allow his opponent to get a Pershing. And handed him basically a panther on a silver platter. But again, no baggy tigers in the war. We are seeing a shrimp magnet though coming under heavy, intense fire. Could be going down. Enemy and there we go, the panzer check sorted out. And of course, one thing to note and come here is too, there'll actually be a difference in the way how veterans is handled. Basically, there won't just be veterans for kills, but also just for damage done. Shrimp magnet moving in there. Now a weapon support sender, but he's using neither, so why he's building it is beyond me. I mean, he doesn't have to build them. He should just sort of try and get perhaps a motor pull up or a tank depot now. And he doesn't really need much of that either. He just needs to supply it up again. So that's just weird and silly. Now the bear tiger sort of rolling about a bit lonely. Possibly cursing its commander. For saying out on a silly mission. Now another Panther battle group arrives. Another two Panzer Kampfwagen 5. But no infantry to support. In fact, there's absolutely no infantry left for SG Peterson, which is absolutely horrific. You should always have infantry. And I'd always recommend the minimum three squads as the bare minimum. Well, the safe minimum. There's two is the bare minimum, the absolutely dreadfully bare minimum, but three is the recommended minimum. But so far, there's none of that. Let's speed this up a bit. You could easily sort out those scout cars. Panthers pulling up there, going in against the engineers. One damaged engine. Bagatico quickly moving up to repair. 
The closest there was to a bagger tiger was actually a bagger elephant. And that's it. Otherwise, there were bagger panthers, but again, no bagger tiger. And the bagger elephant was basically, you know, the elephant, which was basically based on the Porsche chassis of a tiger. Two scout cars holding up there. One already took taking quite a bit of damage. The crew is holding back a bit. In a bit of trouble as well. Fire. And one panther moving up, but not without the other panther. What are you doing, Peterson? Again, don't in units in peacemen in particular against the veteran C2. Pershing, which now has a much higher chance of penetrating. Which basically means it's going to have a much li higher chance of just knocking out your panther without your panther doing much in return. But now we are seeing another panther in aids flanking. Rifleman actually end up retreating possibly to get back to base to actually fight the panthers. That's good. That is a nice handling of it. Again, where's the infantry and why aren't you taking some more victory points, eh, Peterson? Why aren't you repairing? And why aren't you just going for field repairs? You've got it. Just help repair the Panther quickly. Motor pull up, anti tank on the way, but repair the Pershing. Oh, got him, Himmel. Let's return to Peterson. Engineers getting blasted into the ground. And another Pershing arrives, goes up against the Panthers. Sticky bomb on one. Repair the Pershing. Field repairs again, one Panther down. Repair please. Not sure what's going on with Fraps there. Repairing it and... Why are you focusing down the bag? Tiger, there's still a panther firing at your tank, Ajax. Focus it again. And it's just briefly pause to reiterate priorities. A bagger tiger repairing a panther is not your priority. The panther that is already firing at you is your priority. Prioritize that which is firing at you first, then deal with the other things. In particular, when the things firing at you are Panthers. I repeat, Panthers. Let's try again. Back to the fighting, gentlemen. But again, priorities matter. Priorities always matter. And in this case, the priorities definitely went the wrong way, resulting in a Pershing blown up. Again, where Simat now doesn't survive. Now the Panthers down, of course. The back to the skulls going north, of course, the Panther that was trying to be recovered. Yak Panthers now being ready to be supporting. But points are ticking down quickly, and again, the amount of units left are woefully inadequate. And apparently, a Hutchkiss arrives out of nowhere. Fancy that. Must have been called in from some sort of security unit or what not. Getting upgraded with the rockets. Scout car still doing nothing in our use. Doing nothing. And there we go. Stuka fully operational. So off. Mine down there by SG Peterson. And note he's floating so much munitions. He could easily have been laying down a lot of mines at the very least. With the shrimp mines. But he never did it. So again, you know, a lot of things just not happening. And there we go. Another shrimp wagon went down. Countless shrimp wagons have been lost in this fight. And trees. Also a lot of trees. It's so many panthers. Speeding things up a bit. Another Panther battle group arriving. Uh, 
complaining that his opponent will be winning, of course. It's not because he's actually been doing a lot to sort of prevent it. He's just been rushing into the base and losing units again and again and again. We'll all need to work on his unit composition and his tactics and unit preservation. Now going in here towards the mortar and the MG in the barn. MG quickly getting saw out with all the heavy fire being leveled against it. Hutchkiss getting a bit hit by a mortar. MG crew down. Victory point over there, going to get taken. Schwimm Magen out. Spinning things up a bit. And he's actually not going to be bothering with the victory point. He actually goes for the barracks. Again, priorities, Peters, and priorities. Good lord. And there we go, rushing out. Into a base with a Pershing and an anti-tank gun, right from right at the front, though. Going for the victory point. Still no infantry to actually hold it or support the advance. Rockets being launched from the Hutskis, which has also been upgraded. Panther at the front with little support. Anti-tank gun, though, moving up. And with armor piercing around, that could definitely prove to be nasty, in particular since Peterson is exposing the rear armor. And there we go. Panther out of control. Anti-tank gun though needs to be turned to help deal with the other Panther. And the Hotchkiss gets the Pershing. The Hotchkiss finishes it off. Bit of a feat. Stiggy bomb, anti-tank gun fire. Panther could go down. Destroyed engine. There we go, rolling up and flanking the anti-tank gun with the Hotchkiss, the mighty, mighty Hotchkiss. French light tank meant for supporting infantry on the assault. If I'm not completely mistaken. And he sticky bombs the Hotchkiss, he does not try to finish off the Panther. Ach! To leave her. But points are ticking down. And let's just speed up this nonsense. Stiggy bomb, and there we go. Both tanks gone. And another Panther Battle Group. Definitely a Panzer Brigade of the weaker kind. And there we go. A loss to the Panzer Elite. Despite middling efforts by S.G. Peterson. And of course the basic problem was partly again. He just rushed for Panthers without really quite understanding how you used them. He rushed them in too close without support. Got them knocked out. Send more Panthers in. Got them knocked out. Send more Panthers in. Got them knocked out. But also poor handling of infantry. Lost a lot without achieving much. No focus on actually holding the victory points. Too concerned with the rushing into the base. Way too concerned. No use of all the shrimp bags and the mines and the munitions. He could have had to really mine the field. Again, infantry though. No Panzer IVs. And of course, the poor use of anti-tank as is by Ajax, who was completely caught off guard despite it being 20 minutes into the match. Not really strong play either. He definitely forgot one of the vital cardinal rules there. But also not great unit preservation from either. Poor use of machine gun emplacements. Again, all the placing down here of units which never achieved anything in a corner far away from the main fighting and certainly lack of aggression from both sides to a larger extent i mean a lot of things to really point out here so hope you learned something from it if you did why not subscribe tell your friends and if you didn't well why not send a replay of your own or provide some feedback in the comments this is imperial dane saying cheers